Star Citizen is probably the most demanding game out there, unusually heavy on your CPU. Unfortunately, the official minimum specs on the website are, well, they're completely wrong. But don't worry, I've done loads of testing over the last few years of CPUs, GPUs, RAM and storage, and I've chopped it all up in this video. And by the end, you'll know exactly what you need to target around 30 FPS in most parts of the game. And for those of you on a laptop, we'll cover that too. Let's start with the most important thing, the CPU. CIG has recently updated the minimum spec page on the website. They've updated the GPU recommendations, but the most interesting and most confusing part is the CPU changes. CIG used to recommend a quad-core Sandy Bridge CPU as the minimum on the Intel side. I tested this in the past and it was unusable, completely unplayable in the sissies especially. AMD, Bulldozer performs even worse, so it's not even worth considering. But CIG are now stating that an i7 Sandy Bridge or newer is the minimum. So instead of just a quad core, we're now looking at a quad core with hyper threading. It's not ideal. We are definitely sub 15 FPS for most of this. And you can just see the general jitteriness and stutteriness. It's not ideal in any way. The thing, the problem with this is that it's your first impression of the game. So say you've recommended Star Citizen to somebody, you spawn in a city, and say you've got the minimum spec that CIG are recommending, it, it is a pretty unplayable experience. And even worse in Lawville, the, the heaviest place really. 12 FPS as an average is unusable, and this is really tricky to actually just get around, to move around at sub 10 FPS, because obviously that's an average, certain parts are lower, certain parts are higher. It is not good in any way. Fortunately for you, if you're coming here thinking, can my PC play the game? I do know what the minimum spec CPUs really are. So I've done lots of testing on this in the past and my current recommendations are on the Intel side, the Intel i5-10400 or the i7-8700. They're pretty much the same chip, six cores, 12 threads. They are about as low on the Intel side that I'd want to go. They will not necessarily hit 30 fps everywhere in the cities especially they will dip below that but in general they are playable and on the ryzen side the 3600 i think from the the ryzen series is the lowest that you'd want to go the more cores don't really help in star citizen at least at this stage at the moment six cores 12 threads is plenty on these kind of older cpus there will be people out there who are happily chugging along on uh, an older i7 which has got four cores and eight threads like this Sandy Bench one, but maybe they've overclocked it a bit. Different people's expectations when they play a game will factor into this, but for me, I think you're hoping for around the 30 FPS mark as a minimum and with dips below is acceptable. So they're the CPUs I recommend. Let's move on to GPUs. Star Citizen isn't crazy demanding for graphics cards and we've had a significant development this year. In-game upscaling options. We now have DLSS, FSR and TSR options in the game and they effectively allow you to run the game at say 720p and then magically upscale back up to 1080p. There are some significant differences in quality between the different options. Nvidia's DLSS is by far the best option at this stage but it's only supported on RTX cards. So GTX cards will have to use TSR, which in my testing looks slightly better than FSR. And at 1080p, I wouldn't recommend going much below the quality setting, which upscales from 720p. Upscaling from even lower resolutions can get a bit messy, but upscaling can transform cards performances, some from completely unplayable to fairly decent. So I'd highly recommend messing around with it. In terms of the actual cards, CIG changed the recommendations on the website this year. It's an odd list. Here are my thoughts. The Intel integrated graphics is a complete miss. Car crash, no idea what they're thinking there. No idea. The RX 560 also completely unplayable. The Intel one is borderline. I wouldn't want to run around Lawville a lot with that card, but it is pretty decent everywhere else. So maybe we'll give them a pass mark for that one. The 1060 6 gigabyte is back in the game. For a long time, that was my recommended minimum spec GPU. Now we've got the ability to use upscaling to go up to way above 30 FPS in most scenarios here. So that is, again, a good recommendation. The RX 5700 and the Vega 56, the one I didn't test, they're hard to recommend at this very second because CRG hasn't got Vulkan working fully. And so Vulcan is still in beta and it still doesn't work perfectly and, and just won't load. I can't get the game to run 
on this in this scenario. When that happens, when Vulcan is fully working, that should really help with the frame drops that we see on these AMD cards that have got less than 10, 12 gigabytes. So at this very point in time, I'm hesitant to recommend those cards because you will get significant frame drops and frame pacing issues in the cities, especially. But when, depending on when you're watching this video, if, if Vulcan has been developed a bit more, they might become decent recommendations and they actually probably more than you need for a minimum um there's probably other amd cards that will also be helped out but i will retest all that once vulcan comes along a bit and then obviously my kind of recommendation the 1660 series so this here is the 1660 the base level of that series that now with upscaling is actually a pretty decent experience and they're not that expensive it will still just about run the game natively at 1080p above 30 fps in most of the most of the time but with upscaling it it's really quite decent what about ram star citizen has always been very hungry for ram the official minimum is 16 gigabytes and i would largely agree with that but 32 gigabytes is a much smoother experience here's some testing that shows the difference between 16 and 32 as i'm running around lawville one of the cities in the game on the left, we've got 16 gigabytes, and on the right, we've got 30 gigabytes. And you can see that the used physical memory is just much higher, obviously, on the 16 gigabytes. Uh, and for the 32 gigabytes, we're not full at all. We've got free memory, basically. We've got some spare. But as this run goes, keep an eye on the whole hard fault bit over here. I'll use the arrows to label it up for you. But you can see that there was a lot of stuff going on with memory compression on the 16 gigabyte version and also started in itself is having to use the page file because it's run out of physical memory. Whereas on the 32 gigabyte version, we've basically got no hard faults whatsoever. So this is kind of the behind the scenes of what's going on, what is causing uh, potential problems when you've got 16, 16 gigabytes. And you also, if you don't set your page file to be large enough, you can run out of space and effectively the game will just crash. So often if you've got 16 gigabytes, you will have a much better time if you increase the size of your page file. If you're crashing, especially in the cities, increasing the size of your page file can actually help you to stop crashing, but it won't necessarily improve performance. So let's now look at actual performance. I've done 20 runs each in Lawville, and you can see here that, well, as you might expect, performance is slightly better on the 32 gigabyte version of this. I mean, slightly better is uh, actually probably not the right term. It's significantly better when you're looking at the 1% percentile. So this isn't necessarily because your system is running faster when you uh, have got 32 gigabytes uh, of RAM in. It's more that it's not having the big spikes when you go to the page file. So you're not having big drops, FPS drops and losing frames and let me show you some of those big spikes so this is a frame time graph for the 16 gigabyte setup and you can see here that there's some huge spikes like big big multiple second spikes on these ones so 20 runs again in Lawville um, some of these over no, nearly 4,000 milliseconds so crazy crazy drops and, it, and this just generally is the experience when you're playing with 16 gigabytes there's many more spikes many more frame hitches and drops that's just how it works that's always been how it's worked um, and so most people's experience when they upgrade from 16 gigabytes to, to 32 is just that the great game seems to get much smoother let's compare these now side by side so i've effectively changed the range to be both to be about 900 milliseconds and again you can see that the 32 gigabyte system is just much much smoother RAM speed is another factor in this. Now, whatever you've got, it will work, but the faster the RAM, the better. This is quite consistent. I've tested this on all sorts of different systems. If you can get more speed out of your RAM, that will definitely help. Make sure your profiles, XMP profiles or Expo profiles are set, but if you want to tune your RAM as well, if you've really got an old system, but you're thinking, oh, how can I get more performance out of the CPU and the RAM combo? Tuning the RAM can be quite significant. Storage. Thankfully now, CIG's own minimum spec website says that you need an SSD. Up until this year, it said that an SSD was only just recommended, which kind of suggested you could play with a mechanical hard drive. That has not really ever been true. Playing on a hard drive has always been pretty horrific, but in my testing, there isn't much benefit from going any higher or more expensive than just a standard SATA SSD. 
Loading times will be slightly quicker with fast NVMe drives, but it's nothing too significant. And one thing worth mentioning is the size of Star Citizen. The live version of the game, as I make this video, stands at over 100 gigabytes, and I would expect that number to keep going up and up and up as the game expands. The other factor is that there are often multiple test channels open for players to test out new patches and tech. So you can actually end up with two or three versions of the game installed at one time. It's a big game and I'd half recommend a separate drive for it. Can Star Citizen be played on a laptop? Well, yes it can. I've tested a couple out now and I've found that on a fairly cheap modern gaming laptop you can get an experience that's a around maybe a little bit better than the minimum spec desktop parts. If you're rocking a machine from a few years back, I think you might struggle. Older CPUs with slower single threaded performance could very well chug. Here's my summary. So if you are looking to buy a gaming laptop, the top tips really have got to be prioritize that CPU. It, it is the most important part for Star Citizen as it always has been. Even with a, a low end GPU, that wasn't a problem here, the 4050 and 16 gigabytes of RAM didn't really make too much of a problem here wasn't an issue but that cpu was the bottleneck so the faster the cpu you can get the better it will perform and the closer you'll get to desktop sort of performance but do keep an eye on the power draw of these parts because like we said the gpu can vary even if it's a 4050 in one and a 4050 in another depending on how much power it will draw will depend on how well it performs. So it is a minefield. Do your research, watch some good YouTube videos. Another thing to just quickly mention is cloud gaming services. Now, you can't play on like NVIDIA, GeForce or anything like that. It has to be a game that's been, I guess, fully released and then is compatible with their platform. But there is a service called Shadow that allows you to play on the cloud. It's quite expensive and performance is not great, even on their kind of power uh, tier with higher end GPU and CPU it, it just is not great at all so I would discount that basically it's not worth really looking into. I've linked all the original videos in the description if you want more details on any of these topics and I'd highly recommend joining the discord server there's loads of amazing people there who can help you out with your minimum spec PC build suggest upgrades and new builds as well link for that is also in the description.